Hey everybody, my name is Evan and this is the weather. And as you can see, we do have a risk out there for severe weather. And in fact, today could be a little bit dangerous uh, out there. You can see we do have a three out of five for severe weather over here near like areas like Davenport, Bloomington, Chicago, Fort Wayne, parts of Michigan, and also parts of Wisconsin as well. This is going to be an area where we're going to be watching out for a couple of risks. The first one is going to be that tornado risk. We do have a 5% for tornadoes out here uh, near Cedar Rapids. Davenport, Bloomington, Chicago, also over there just to the west of Fort Wayne. Got a little bit of a 2% around that as well. And that pretty much just means you have a 2% chance of seeing a tornado within a 25 mile radius of you. So there is a chance, but it's kind of low if you're in the green, but in the, in the you know, the brown, it's going to be a little bit more of a higher risk. Could even see uh, multiple tornadoes in this area today. So make sure you watch out uh, for that as the storms do end up coming through. But uh, the main thing that we're going to be watching out for is the risk of a derecho. There is a pretty decent risk that we could have a kind of a longer track wind event with multiple damage reports and maybe even some instances of a pretty intense wind event out here. As you can see, we do have a red region here. And that's a 30% chance for 75 mile per hour winds and above. So it's not just for those 75 mile per hour winds, but you could get even stronger winds than that 80 miles per hour, maybe can't rule out 90 miles per hour so if you live over there near the cedar rapids and davenport and bloomington area chicago and fort wayne you guys definitely need to be paying attention other areas are we're going to be expecting some severe weather as you can see we already have some warnings uh ongoing here in between canada and united states that little complex is going to be moving into the northeast eventually we already have a severe thunderstorm watch out there for areas like rochester syracuse ithaca utica that need to be watching out for this storm and also a little 15 percent here for damaging winds and a little 2% chance for tornadoes out there for the same area. So definitely make sure that you are keeping an eye on that threat as it moves close to you. A little bit further out to the west, we do have a 15% here over in parts of Nebraska, Kansas, Colorado, and also going into Wyoming. So just make sure you're watching out for those damaging winds and also the potential uh, for some hail is also possible today. And that's going to be kind of when these storms start off initially over there near Waterloo, Cedar Rapids, and Davenport. Uh, the Moines, Dubuque, Rockford, Madison, and the Cross in the Brown region. It's a little bit less likely, but also possible uh, still over there in the Northeast as well. Going into tomorrow, we're not expecting as a high caliber of a day, but still could get some severe weather. That's going to be four parts of the Ohio Valley going up into the Northeast, and then a long little area of a small chance, but still possibility of some severe weather going all the way into the Ozarks and also into the mid and upper plains uh, with a little bit of a highlighted area where there could be a little bit of a higher risk uh, for some severe weather over there, you know, near Kansas and Colorado. If we come over here to the tornado risk, though, the only place where we're going to be uh, expecting to see maybe one tornado or a brief spin up or a couple of tornado warnings could be possible, uh, could be over here in the northeast, all the way from uh, Ohio, going into West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, and even parts there of Vermont. So just be weather aware again, 2% or so nothing to freak out about, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Going into day three, so that's three days from now. We do have another kind of marginal uh, severe weather risk up here in the northeast. Not really expecting too much other than some scattered severe weather and thunderstorms being possible. Also, same thing goes for over here in, near Colorado, New Mexico, in the panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma, going into tiny parts there of Kansas, uh, and then also into maybe South Dakota as well. Just keep an eye on this. These little risks will change around as we get closer. So moving on over to the, the kind of future radar for today also going into tomorrow. As you can see up here in the Northeast, we're gonna have this little complex of storms currently hanging out there in parts of Canada and near Toronto and Hamilton. And that's gonna eventually push in probably by around 2 p.m. here near the Buffalo region. Uh, some damaging winds, maybe a small tornado risk could be associated with this as it pushes to the east towards Rochester by around 5 p.m. Also Ithaca as well. And then that's eventually gonna push off the east even more towards Utica. Then by around 7 p.m., you start to see these storms start to lose their intensity. Uh, near Utica. But, you know, we could see thunderstorms going as far south as maybe even Baltimore and Washington. So keep an eye out for maybe a couple uh, strikes of thunder could ruin some outdoor plans up there. Then after this, you can see the, the line of storms gets a lot weaker, maybe still some lingering thunders and, uh, you know, rain going up into Vermont. And then by the time we get well into the day, it kind of dissipates by around 12 a.m. Coming back over here where we're watching out for a derecho risk. Uh, you can see we do have a little um, 
cluster of showers that are starting to dissipate. And this is that cold air that's going to be pushing into that warm and moist air that's going to be allowing uh, this storm to exist today. And as you can see, probably right around 4 or 5 p.m., we're expecting a pretty large cluster here of thunderstorms over there near Waterloo and Cedar Rapids. It's going to be really bringing in that cooler air, that cold air pool. It's going to try to develop this little MCS uh, or potential derecho if this thing does end up happening as forecasted. And as you can see, this little cluster started around 5 p.m., 6 p.m. over here. You can see these storms kind of get a little bit more widespread uh, there in Iowa and start to nudge into Illinois. And then by 8 p.m., we start to see this thing form into more of a line of storms. This is when that wind risk is really going to start to pick up here for like Davenport, Rockford. And this is going to try to push into Chicago and Juliet. And remember, at this time, you know, we're talking about a 5% tornado risk really from here on forward uh, into 8 p.m. So this little line of storms could be bringing those QLCS tornadoes or essentially briefer and weaker type tornadoes are going to be possible with this as this pushes off to the east. Goes into Chicago and Juliet by around 9 p.m. Still holding on to that tornado risk. But by the time we get into around 11 p.m., that tornado risk should start to be dying down as this becomes a little bit more outflow dominant. That wind risk is also going to be dying down at this point. Um, but there's still going to be a possibility of severe weather over there near Logan Sport, Fort Wayne, uh, over there near Lansing in Michigan as well. And then, you know, still could have some lingering thunderstorms and showers as far out as 1 a.m. over there near Bloomington and Urbana and Springfield. That pushes down to the south towards Indianapolis, Bloomington as well at around 5 a.m. And, you know, we could still see some showers and thunderstorms uh, going into the next day. And that's what's going to be causing that little marginal risk that we were talking about. Uh, this little boundary here could con back some more severe thunderstorms going into the day and then even further down to the south we're going we're to start to see some of those pop-up thunderstorms as well going into tomorrow um, all around you know Alabama Mississippi Tennessee some of these might end up bringing some severe weather but you know it's going to be your garden variety summer pop-up thunderstorms where you get surprised by some lightning or maybe some small hail looking at the temperatures for the next two days you can see that uh, going into today and uh, kind of like in the afternoon hours here you can see it's really going to be kind of impressively hot over there in northern Texas just because we have a little bit of a high pressure system there and those pinks and lighter colors that is showing that we have a lot of heat out there and especially over here in the southeast and also on the east coast we're gonna have that excess moisture out there so it's gonna feel a little bit hotter than what you would typically um, you know feel without that uh, moisture but man even going into the nighttime hours that heat is hanging on there into the central plains and then pushing this even further into the night you can see that cold pool that potential derecho move through uh, the Ohio Valley there, bringing cooler temperatures for a lot of the folks up there in the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes as well. And then pushing this even further, you can see going into the next day, we're going to see that heat return for maybe a little bit further down south over there near Oklahoma northern Texas. Also, maybe a little bit of relief of the heat as we get some more showers and thunderstorms form again down here in the southeast. But look over there near Washington, Richmond, and New York, Philadelphia. I mean, those are potentially up into the hundreds up there. Also, with a little bit of moisture, that's going to feel very oppressive. And then look over here near Phoenix and Tucson. It is also uh, very hot out there as well. Drier heat, but still potentially dangerous. Watch out for that as that heat continues as expected during the summer. But all right, that's going to be it for me. Again, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want more updates on weather and also consider hitting a like button if you've enjoyed this forecast. And I will see you guys later on today where I'll be live covering that possible derecho.